So we're here to solve this challenging puzzle, Explosion, by Jin Huan. It's a topic that's got a few places to start and some subtle deductions, but places where if you are careful in tracking topic clues, you may uh, be able to see what's going on. I'll start in the lower right, which is the first place that draws my attention just because of a 1-1-1 one, one, one on an edge. It's a forced pattern, and it's right next to this adjacent clue. Actually, all the clues are paired diagonally as part of the theme. It's tied to this 2-3. I've really marked in uh, the starts of those clues. The cell is never shaded, and one of these in white is shaded. And coming up this edge, I've got a lot now near this 1-3, and I want to do something that um, may help sort of clarify how to get through these puzzles sometimes, which is mark when I've got two scenarios for the grid, what the two scenarios look like. And in this case, the puzzle will solve with the blue cell on or the red cells on, but it won't have both. Um, and that's saying that this cell here in the lower right of this clue needs to stay connected. So it's going to be where the stretch of three cells goes and it either comes to the left and immediately touches up with the singleton or it comes up and then fills those cells in red. Notice that if it takes the cells in red, the cells that aren't used are going to be this one, this one, and this one. And note if it takes the one in blue, we actually don't know where the last cell is on top, but in both of these, these shadings, this cell right here is not used. And you may say, why is that a key one to find? And the reason it's a key one to find is that the cell right next to it, this 112 clue, is fairly constrained. And it was constrained originally at the start of the puzzle to have one degree of freedom. A 112 is going to have four shaded cells as well as at least three unshaded cells between them, which may or may not include this, this clue cell. Now we've actually put two of those unshaded together, which means there are still two more to put around it. So let's think of it this way. If I put in a, a shaded cell here, and you know it could be the one or the two, effectively it now has to take these remaining spaces. I still have this unshaded and this unshaded to fill in. That there are still um, two unshaded and four shaded to place. And the thing it really means is these extremes, this cell and this cell, must be used. And there are still lots of options for the rest, like this could be one, one, two, this could be one, one, two. But notice that if we don't take these extremes, if we left something like this, we'd be trying to place two and one and one more, but we can't keep them separate. So the extremes are a factor after we place this cell as unshaded that influences this clue. And with those marked in, I now have actually marked three shaded cells around the one three, and red is no longer possible. And I get a uh, quick clarity of how this, this works out. And that flows for this lower right corner pretty well. This clue is going to have to flow up, which will complete the one one two pattern like this. And this looks like a good place to pause and talk about a different kind of logic that's going to be key in this puzzle. And one thing I see uh, both in the upper left where all these numbers are small, but particularly right now, are cases where I have an isolated channel of the grid where in order to cross it, we need to use as many as three cells. But in practice, I have clues nearby that are only ones or twos. And so I cannot get all the way through this section in blue to stay connected. And for sure, that means I have to come through this section in uh, the bottom edge of the grid by the four clue to stay connected. And that gives me a good start here to be able to do the next steps of what I want to run. One thing I see is that after I mark this cell unusable, I actually can now put some more constraints on the, the cells that remain. Again, I need to place two with an unshaded cell with two more. And I can't actually start a two from this cell. If I put this in, it would cause an issue. So the only place I can get two of two is like this. And so it's a pretty uh, fast way to make progress these cells staying connected will look like this. I can't get through this channel, and this is much more obvious because it's a 1-1 one, one clue that I can't take three cells, and it may even be something that uh, if you're getting just started with top, but it's helpful to sometimes just mark these edges off of one clues. You'll never cross an edge with two shaded cells. They could both be unshaded, but you'll never cross those edges. And so for sure at the start of the grid, like these cells are never reachable. Um, some of these cells could be reachable, but you're only going to take one of them. And uh, what that means is that the way to stay connected is to take this cell um, for sure. And in taking that cell, we mark this cell off, and that marks this cell on. And we get this pattern to complete the lower left of the grid and uh, have some more progress moving the top of through.
This option at the top with this one next to the two is also pretty constrained, and you'll see that whichever of these we take, the next cell off of it is going to be the last cell of the two clues, so these cells are never part of the two. And I'm marking that in, you'll see that we actually isolate the top of it. We took this left side, uh, so it's got to be this one on the top is how this goes. That puts in these at the top. It actually now constrains this one one to have to take this cell here. And that completes the one two clue, which forces these in like this. Now we've got a case where we've got uh, two three clues. And one thing to think about with them is again, I have uh, the fact the clues themselves are unused. I have to have one more unshaded cell at least that will be away from the clues. And so there are, there are actually two cells that you can force to be put in. Notice that if I took this cell and made it unused, I would force the one right next to it to be unused based on the clue beneath. And now I have five cells to use, but I couldn't keep them going. Similarly, this cell must be used, this cell must be used, and this cell must be used. Basically, one in from a 2-3 clue. You could have a 2-3 like this, or you could have a 2-3 like this. But the, the, these diagonal cells off this pin space would be an issue to fully mark off. So I can mark off these diagonals. And marking those diagonals, I mark off this cell, which now actually uh, really forces what's next to it, because now I have a stretch of two marked off, but I've got to take this clue, I've got to take this clue. To be able to take a third cell or not take a third cell, I have to be able to take this cell as well. That marks this in, that marks these in. I've got a few options for the last cell here, but let's notice some things. If I took uh, let's see what's the best way to show it. If I took, if I marked off this cell, um, I'm going to have to come through this way, but in doing so I'm going to mark off the cell as well and isolate a bit of the top of And uh, where I've canceled a little bit too much and going backwards, what it means is I must use this cell. And uh, in coming through then, I've got to come across the top and complete this way. So this was, for a midweek puzzle, some pretty challenging steps. Um, the kinds of logic I was running into as I was solving it, maybe not as common, but looking at the two options around this 1-3 clue, eventually using that to force a cell that's not possible, use that to then force around it with the adjacent clue the next things. We got some tight channels around this 2-2, around this left border and in the upper left side. And then an observation just around these pin clues, the two threes have to use a fair amount of cells and these diagonal cells um, that are one away, not adjacent to, but one more cell away from the other uh, marked off uh, white space are, are really key around a two three pattern. So probably unfamiliar patterns led to the challenge in the grid, but hopefully you got a sense of some things to watch out for top of puzzles, some tips and tricks for this one and for the future, and we'll see you again soon.